Welcome back to Character Select. We are Franzi, and by we I mean me and Tyler, so we're basically a split personality in Franzi's head, and Franzi mm. has just made it to the town of Mordavia. Where can we get some borscht? Franzi simply reads, in. Alright, well let's go to the inn. Let's go a good place. in the inn! <laughs> John Reese davies beat you to that joke. Hi! You've entered a small but nicely furnished country inn. Stairs lead up to the guest bedroom. Sawdust and peanut shells sounds mm -hmm. like a steakhouse. The few shells that to land in it. Have you ever been to a steakhouse that does that? No. Yes, once. I didn't like it. I, I felt weird walking on paper, uh, peanut shells. Mm. This is the Hotel Mordavia. You can check out any time you like, but you can never leave. Your <laughs> room. Would be the first room at the top of the stairs. Uh, when you want food in the morning or evening, just sit down over there by the door. Okay. Pay the innkeeper for your room. So we basically pay for a week in advance. Thank you for your payment. Groovy. Because we do need a place to sleep. We won't that's be sleeping here very often. That's a spoopy looking burr up there. It's a garlic souffle, Mordavian style. Ooh, that sounds delicious. <laughs> if pungent. All right, but she's... Okay, thanks, lady. Pungent nothing. You can never have too much garlic. <laughs> What's your name? My name is Yuri Markarov. My wife's name is Bella. We are the owners of this inn. Cool. Tell me about the inn. The Hotel Mordavia has been in my family for generations. It is the only place to be when darkness falls at night. Everything else is closed, and even we lock the doors. You must knock if you wish to come in. Okay. Tell me about the town. Make certain you are back in town before dusk. The gates of the town will close solidly to keep out any dangers. Like spooky vampires and zombies! Well, tell me about these dangers. There are many ill things that roam this valley by night. Spooky vampire? That you never <laughs> have to meet. Zombie? Never venture There's definitely zombies in this game. Werewolf? So everybody's like, this place is really dangerous, and nobody's telling me anything about it. Spooky, scary skeletons? Introduce yourself. You say you are a hero. Well, we will judge you here by your actions rather than your words. Okay. They send shivers down your spine. <laughs> Magic is a very dangerous thing. We do not trust those who use or are used by magic. Hmm. I'm certain you do not give us any more cause for alarm. I mean, okay. I'll just well, cast all the magic I want, because fuck you all. <laughs> is that some delicious stew cooking on the fire there? Uh. A warm fire. Nope, nah. just it's a warm fire. They stare at you in a... Oh, I want to talk to the guys in the back. I like how, like, the garlands hanging around everything is, like, nothing but garlic. <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? And they I must make a lot of garlic, because... I'm a farmer of pumpkins and corn and a person of great importance here in lovely Mordavia. Are you making Listen, fun of Jack Nicholson? Igor... Pleased to meet you. I'm there was a glitch there in one of the lines. Herder. Unfortunately, there are no more elephants in Mordavia, so business has kind of fallen off a tad. Now, the nice thing about these three guys is mm -hmm. they were obviously given a script. Yep. Because that's the lines that are in the game. But then when they were told to read their lines, they just said, fuck it, and did whatever. <laughs> guys, is it just me or is Mordavia a wonderful place? <laughs> oh, are you kidding? It's the greatest. There's many places to go, things to see. Are you kidding? Right. Let's not forget that scenic cemetery to the east of town. Okay. Everyone here is nothing but grins. Real friendly. Yeah, except we don't know you. We don't like strangers. <laughs> you don't like rats, <laughs> neither. Else you kind of some kind of knock. <laughs> One okay. of us. One of us. <laughs> so, uh, you guys heard any good rumors lately? Rumors? <coughs> you talking to me? What rumors? 
Huh. There are no rumors here. Unless you count the rumor that the castle is owned by... Horse Patooty. By there a spooky no vampire? To speak of. <laughs> uh, tell me about the town. The town of Mordavia is a quiet place. Filled with friendly, joyful, stinky people. <laughs> well, I'm not so sure about the friendly part. We tend to be very suspicious of strangers like you. Okay. Yeah, well, anyway, the town is filled with joyful and stinky people. <laughs> Joyful and stinky people. <laughs> well, I wouldn't call us particularly joyful. <laughs> As a matter of fact, most of us are pretty glum. <laughs> oh, very well. All right, then. Mordavia is filled with people. You know, stinky ones. <laughs> yeah, many stinky people. Duh, God. Well, I wouldn't exactly <laughs> call it many. Oh, good Actually, lord. Not very many of us around here. Oh, forget it. Well, at least he stinks. <laughs> <laughs> Just fucking ridiculous. Oh. Right. Well, let's go check out our room. Should be fine. Shove some of that, shove some of that garlic up your butt. Protect you from vampires. The door to your... That is the door sound for every single door in the game. Well, there's so, plenty of it in here too. Yep. Yeah, so first things first, let's steal some. You take a clove of garlic in case you meet an Italian chef. What does Italian have to do with anything? Garlic's delicious. <laughs> So much like the second game, the, the remake of the second game and the third game, there is a chest where we can store anything we don't need. Mm -hmm. However, if you try to store this, and this is interesting. You realize with horror that you are totally unable to put down the Dark One sign here. It seems to have a will of its own. Creepy. I mean, who didn't see that coming? Mm-hmm. Also, you know, much like the other game, the other games, you never actually need to store anything. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Alright, so we've seen the inn, so let's uh, let's move on and get on with our day and our explorations of this lovely town full of stinky people. So, you are still around, are you? When are you leaving Mordavia? As soon as I fucking can, because you're not very nice. Welcome to the shop. This general store is cheery and well lit, thanks to the warm hearth. The first things that you notice are the cats. They seem to be everywhere. It's a crazy cat lady! Then you see the shopkeeper, sitting on her rocking chair as she knits. She's a very, well, uh, sturdy... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're the stranger in town. I've heard all about you already. I've been here for like 30 minutes. Can we make an armor out of all the cats? No. That would be awesome. Just like fire cats out of our wrist guards? <laughs> we don't even have any wrist guards. We'll have to make them out of more cats. It's true. <laughs> you can call me Olga. Mrs. Dovich is uh, too formal after all. We don't welcome strangers here. They bring nothing but trouble. All the same, it's... Well, we're here to bring all the trouble. I mean, yes. Uh, so let's let's ask some questions. Magical what do you have for shenanigans. Um, let me see. What could you use? Well, besides my regular items like brooms and pens, I uh, really don't have anything else for adventurers like yourself. Wow. Now, I do have some lovely sandwiches you can use for rations. And garlic. Of course, you need garlic. I've also got some oil you can use to keep the weapons and armor from rusting. Mm-hmm. And if you like sweets, I've got some yummy homemade candy. Although the garlic-flavored ones have all been purchased by now. <laughs> I'll have to uh, make some more. Hmm. Oh, and a shopping bag to carry things in. I have a couple of those left. Okay. Bags are useful. Tell me about garlic. Oh, now garlic is a must-have item. It's just 25 kopecks for a bulb, and it will add flavor to any food. Storekeeper looks around nervously for a moment, then continues. You know, some say garlic also has medicinal and protective properties. You don't say against what? Tell me about these trail <clears throat> rations. My husband 
Oswald said I make the most interesting sandwiches. Uh, they're very good for you. And I only charge 50 kopecks each for them. Okay. Well, the rest of it seems pretty self-explanatory. Tell me about rumors. What would you like to know about? Everything. Spooky, scary skeletons. Tell me about the innkeeper's wife. Yeah, Bella's a good woman. She's the one who really runs the inn. Her husband just gives orders. Someday she'll give Yuri a piece of her mind and good for her. <laughs> the thing she puts up with. Hmm. Bella. She was a pretty woman not long ago. Was not called Bella for nothing. Losing her only child really aged her. What a tragedy. Oh, that sucks. That sounds like magic. And the rest of it, we technically don't know about it yet, so fuck it. Yeah, my uh, did, oops, sorry. Yeah, my well, I mean, we could ask about the castle. The dude did start to say something about the castle. It's true. Now, but I keep it just the way he liked it. A well-run shop is a busy shop, he always used to say. Not very busy anymore, what with the swamp. But I try to keep it going the best I can. Mostly housewares, but a few items that uh, might interest you. Okay, cool. Well, let's purchase some goods, shall we? We've got money. We do. So, the first thing that we want to buy is some candy. Very important. And then we're oh. going to need to buy some rations. Oh, Very that pie pan. What, the pie pan? Yeah, with the pie pan. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So, much like the last couple of games, the conversion rate is 100 kopecks to a crown. So, a pie pan for 250 kopecks is two and a half crowns. Not yep. that big a deal. So, yeah, why not? However... I can definitively say that, A, we stole garlic, so we don't need to buy some. B, uh, we are not thieves and do not need an oil flask. C, we are not paladins and do not need a hand broom. And D, we are not thieves and do not need a shopping bag. Those are character-specific items that everybody can get, but nobody needs to. But we can carry the, all our sandwiches in the shopping bag. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now let's go into his house and rob him blind. I mean, you can go into the Burgomeister's place, but he's not... He doesn't say anything different, so we'll go in there soon, though. Oh, okay. Steal a pie and put it in the pie pan. ...the sound of a chisel chipping away at a stone block. A man is carving gravestones at one end of the street. Okay. Your attention quickly moves from the stone carver to the ominous Gothic building in the center of the street. There is definitely something not right about this structure. Not right? What do you mean? It is a thoroughly... Uh, look at the fucking... You don't... This is a bas relief of a strange creature. It looks like an octopus with only six tentacles. You have a creepy feeling as if it is looking right back at you. Cthulhu! You don't... You don't... Tell me about this freaking monastery. It's an advertisement for you. Don't okay, apparently not. Never mind. Well, let's talk to this guy, shall we? Uh, before we do that, let's actually He's introduce us. Yeah, let's let's greet her. Let's greet him. The headstone carver stares at you, and then goes back to work. Oh, that's rude. Let me introduce myself. You introduce yourself to the grave digger. Me, Igor. Okay. Of course you are. Uh, tell me about this monastery. Uh, bad building. No, go there. Bad, bad, bad. Okay. Well, how you doing? Tell me about this town. This north part of town. Okay. Uh, what do you do? Oh, this day job. Also work graveyard shift. <laughs> Little graveyard humor there. <laughs> Tell me about grave digging, I guess. Igor dig graves in cemetery. Igor put dead person in grave. Igor cover dead person with dirt. Oops. I skipped this whole conversation Igor there. Graves. Oh, plenty job security around here. Business is piling up. <laughs> Little graveyard humor there. <laughs> Again. <laughs> oh, God. Everybody's got a weird sense of humor. Great. They do. And Tell you me know about this. You love it. Tell me about this building next to you. Building was Adventurers Guild. Uh, no adventurers, no guild. Yeah, it does seem like a problem, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, have you heard any rumors, Igor? Oh, 
Carl, Igor not hear rumors. Igor not no stranger in town. Igor not no doctor make strange things in lab. Igor not no funny man in inn not funny. Igor not no many things. Igor not hear many things. Okay. Well, uh, see ya. He looks at you and then goes back to work. Cool. Mm. You can't. You don't. This weather-beaten boarded up door once sported a painted sign. But this is the Adventurer's Guild. Open door. The door is locked. Oh. Uh, don't we have like a spell that opens it's doors? Cool. We do, but it's probably not nice to just kind of randomly wander into a building. But it's abandoned. Yeah, but it's honorless. Still, you if you say so. It is a wonder you have managed to live so long. Dude, fuck Boring. you. Are you saying your town's not safe? Dude? Mr. Sheriff-like person? Friendo? Hey. hey, um, tell me about the, that Adventurer's Guild. The Adventurer's Guild is in the north part of town, but it's closed and boarded up. There have been no adventurers here since the road was flooded. Well, excuse me, what am I, chopped liver? the laws of the land, I must give you the key for the asking. Perhaps it will be of some use to you. That's a weird law, man. But okay. Um. Alright, that's enough. You don't want to ask about the castle? No, we'll ask about the castle later. Right now we don't really even know about the castle, technically. We do know about it, because <clears throat> the dude started to say something about it, and then he stopped. It's true. So I feel like maybe we should ask more about it. We will. We're, we're exploring the town first. Welcome to the Adventurer's Guild. It's always a moose. Why is it's a rare example of the deadly Mordavian moose, distinguishable by its long, fang-like canine. Someone has strung garlic around its neck, probably in hopes that it will stay on the wall. C cool. Are we gonna have a Rocky training montage in here? Uh, we are, but you know what? It's been a long time since we didn't skip leg day. Your legs are too stiff and sore to use this right now. There's an actual justification for this thing in the manual. Suck it this up, is dude. It's either some sort of diabolical device or an exercise machine. But as you can see... Th Come to think of it, exercise machines are diabolical devices. Thank you for explaining the joke. So, as you can see, that drained most of our stamina, so now we really can't do much. But, you know, that's fine. Any fun books? Uh, let's read the books. Which book do you... Uh, let's uh, read Hero Magazine. Yeah. As you scan through Hero, the Journal of General Job Adjusting, you find quite a bit of information that might be useful here. There are a series of articles about the land of Modal. Oh, look! Castle Tell Borgov. That's interesting. <laughs> the Borgovs were the boyars, or local noblemen, assigned the role of guarding the area from invaders. Cool. Yep. The chapter on fauna describes a number of interesting... Necrotar? The Necrotar is a vicious carnivore with big sharp... Necrotars are actually terrifying. <laughs> is it a skeleton on a skeleton horseback? No. No. Creature known for playing practical jokes on travelers and playing riddle games, but which can also be helpful to those it likes. Okay. Learn about the Rosalka, the spirit of a murdered unmarried woman. Such spirits are said to inhabit lakes and rivers. They try to avenge themselves. So, as I'm sure you can tell at this point, this game is very heavily based in Russian mythology. You can really learn a lot by reading this magazine thoroughly instead of just browsing through it. Isn't it nice that we included a complete copy in your game box? And they did. That was actually the manual. Colon, hyphen, uh, <laughs> and parentheses. Yep. Read the brochure. The book turns out to be an advertising brochure. It says, I, Dr. Cranium, predict that someday <laughs> one of my descendants will become the uh -huh. major computer <laughs> game. The castle of Dr. Brain from Sierra Online. Jeez, how can you get? <laughs> let's uh, let's read about creative casting. The book is all about using spells in unusual and creative ways. 
such as calming a fire. Which we've done. Using alternate flame and frost spells to make something brittle and break. Which we haven't done. We pick up a number of useful tips which will improve your spell cast. We haven't done that because we don't... Yeah. No, actually, that's not. Uh, but we don't actually have uh, uh, a frost spell, so we can't do the this flame and frost spell thing. Which is the mm. ancient oriental art of talk fool. How to overcome opponents by attacking them with the unpronounceable names of martial arts forms and confusing them with fortune cookie wisdom. You get lost somewhere between karate and cook sir. Okay. Uh, let's take a book. Hey, this isn't a lending library. Well, fuck you. Who's stopping me here? Jesus. Mm. All right. So, as always, there is an adventurer's journal, and much like every other time, we should sign it. But first, let's read it. You read in the adventurer's log about some of the exploits. Yoder and the Dark Ones Cult. Mm -hmm. Prominent among them is the story of Piotar and the Dark Did Ones. Or Piotar. Fight the wolf? Near the end of the book, Pyotr tells how he led the armies against the Chernovi cult outside the Dark One's cave. The fighters were trained soldiers, but the cult members fought like madmen. That's not good. Suddenly, the cult members changed their form mm. and became grotesque monsters. Many of the soldiers panicked and ran. The battle was nearly lost. Then Pyotr heard the voice of Irana. By all my will, I banish you to... The voice was cut off. The cult members screamed and ran. Piotr entered the cave and searched for some sign of life. All he could find were the grotesque remains of cult members. The only sign of Irana was her magical staff lying on the ground. Piotr picked it up and left the cave, knowing that Irana was beyond his help. Piotr then tells how he brought the staff back to town and placed it in the town square. A garden of flowers instantly sprang up around it. Near the end of the book, Piotr tells that he was going to seek out the rituals of the Dark One and destroy them. There are no later entries. So, you remember Ravana, right? She made Dorana's Peace in the first game and uh, the Pool of Peace in the third game and stuff like that? Yeah. Yep. This is the last place she was ever seen. <laughs> Can't imagine so why. Into the adventurer's log book with a flourish. It's almost become a habit by now. Franzi, badass wizard. That would be a lot easier if the desk had a Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then it looks like there is a sword here. A finely crafted sword rests within this case. But there doesn't seem to be a sword. A, a plaque reads, break glass in emergency. Well, it's definitely an emergency. Force case open. Are you kidding? You have trouble <laughs> forcing a mayonnaise jar open, let alone a heavy case. You'll need to build up your strength before you can get through this one. Uh, pry case open? There's no sign at all of a crack or seam in this case. Smash the glass with the pommel of your dagger. Or even a place to slip your dagger. Case looks totally solid. The case is totally sealed. So we can't open it. It's for fighters only. What happens is at the beginning of the game for fighters and paladins, they find a rusty sword and a shield um, where we found the, the canvas, yep. uh, canvas sheet. Um, they get here and they're the ones that can smash it open to get a fine sword to replace their rusty sword. And then paladins can later get a flaming sword to replace their paladin sword from the third game. Um, and fighters get an axe. Hmm. All right, there's still more places to explore in this town, so we're going to have to do that next time on Character Select. So thank you very much for watching. Make sure to click that like button down below if you liked it. And Tyler. Is that the chicken? Yes. No. <laughs> Maybe? No. No.